Hello and welcome. Today we are talking the John G. Evelston Director's Cut Unreleased Bootleg VHS Quality Director's Cut of Rocky V. So John G. Evelston, the director of the original Rocky film, was asked back to direct Rocky V after Stallone directed 2, 3 and 4. I'm one of those fans that appreciates the whole series mind, especially now that we've had Rocky VI and 2 pretty well written Creed films that included Rocky in a nice way and kind of capped his story off in a more positive and respectful manner than we got before. There were more optimistic endings for Rocky. Once upon a time though, Rocky V was planned to be the last ever Rocky film. That's the way we all understood it. Even the end credits let us know it was the end of Rocky. Initially, like many others, I didn't really enjoy Rocky V for many reasons. Rocky V right off the bat hits us with some serious negatives. The film starts with Rocky in the shower after the Drago fight. He calls out for Adrian and he's rambling. Eventually he ends up calling Adrian Mick. So we know straight away his brains are pretty much scrambled. And this sets up the first act of the film where Rocky not only finds out he has brain damage, but to top it off, his accountant has ripped him off and stolen all of his cash. Two very depressing and very real situations that wealthy boxers have found themselves in over the years. The original Rocky V ending was to offer us an even more bleak finale to the series, with Rocky dying in Adrian's arms after the street fight, which would have really been the icing on a mega shit sandwich. I can see why Stallone decided that this is what he needed to do for five. He probably felt Rocky had been everywhere and this would ground the character again. The issue was the execution wasn't perfect and this was set to be the last film in the series. Rocky fans just didn't want to see Rocky go down like that with no way back. Going down is one thing, but Rocky would never be able to rise again and kind of that's been the whole story of the series, right? Throw in some cheesy lines here and there and some really terrible early 90s rap music and it just felt wrong. It just felt like it didn't fit. And to be honest, it never got any better over the years. It just aged terribly. Gone was Bill Conti and Survivor's iconic music. And in was some throwaway trash that really dated the film, even more than Rocky IV's 80s tracks. By contrast, you can listen to that Rocky IV soundtrack right now and enjoy it. You can't say the same for the Rocky V soundtrack, which I once owned on CD and played about twice. It felt like they were trying to be trendy. I mean, I've heard Stallone say recently that the film Rocky 4 was so 80s but that didn't hurt the film and it, to this day it doesn't hurt the film that Rocky 4 is so 80s to be honest with you the music in Rocky 5 has always brought the film down whereas in the other Rocky films the music has always brought the films up and again polar opposites to what we'd experienced before so what we were left with was what to me was a pretty mediocre or bad script choices and as the years went by, it became the Rocky film that I watched the least, Rocky V. Anyway, years and years later, Rocky VI come out, and then Creed I and Creed II, and they really helped me to look at Rocky V in a more positive light, as now I knew that Rocky V wasn't the depressing end to the series it once was. But Rocky V still wasn't good. It still wasn't the film, the Rocky film that I stuck on to watch very often. It just was no longer unbearable. So recently I found out about an unreleased John G. Avilston director's cut of Rocky V that was uploaded to the web in VHS quality. Before I watched it, I assumed that the reason the director wanted us to see this cut finally is because he was never allowed to show us what he originally planned for the film. But I did wonder how different could the director's cut be from the version we got? Well, the answer is Rocky V's bootleg unofficial screener director's cut is very different from the film we got it's very different this is not just a recut version of the film using different takes of the same lines and whatnot there's actually totally new scenes scenes that are deleted with totally different dialogue there's even different dialogue in existing scenes that you'll recognize and this dialogue really does change the tone of the film I guess for whatever reason they decided to delete those scenes, but man, they shouldn't have. The feel of the film is changed and it's changed for the better. I can only imagine a lot of the film was reshot at either Stallone's request or the interfering studio's request. 
after all, for the director to release this version, he must have felt that it was better than what made it to release. And it probably bugged him for years that everyone said his film was terrible, especially after he directed Oscar winning Rocky 1. I must say it helped that I'd recently watched Rocky 5 so I could spot some of the more obscure changes. But to be honest, most scenes play a lot better. So even if you don't know what was there before, you just feel that this cut of the film has worked better. You feel it. Tommy Gunn in this version is a lot more bratty and ungrateful to Rocky. The change, the betrayal takes a lot longer to play out in the director's cut. George Washington Duke is toned down a bit and feels more natural rather than so over the top. I mean, he's, he's meant to be an over the top Don King character, right? But they just took it back a notch in this cut. A lot of the cheese was removed. It's mostly completely gone. And there's even a return for little Marie. This is probably the change that makes the least different, but it was interesting that they shot it anyway. Who Rocky finds out didn't listen to his warnings from Rocky 1 <laughs> to go home at night, and she became a prostitute. So that was one of the more interesting changes. But it was interesting to see that they were planning on going down that route. Add to that, we get some excellent Talia Shire. She is amazing when she's given a nice chunk of dialogue and a dramatic scene. She just chews that up. She's I can I can watch Talia Shire for years. I mean, the stuff she did in Rocky and, and and Godfather alone, you know, people can only dream of doing in their whole career. Add to that, the fight scene at the end plays out a lot better with the fight starting off with Rocky being reluctant to fight Tommy, rather than him offering Tommy to go outside after he punches Paulie in the mouth. And then Rocky still is reluctant to fight when outside and Tommy just boxes him in the face and then the fight kicks off. The fight's cut a lot differently. It's just a more realistic, gritty street fight. Gets straight to the point. And when it's all said and done, even the ending of the film and the way it all pans out is, is different. I don't want to completely spoil it because it's not the Rocky Five you've seen. You wouldn't have seen this, but it's worth watching. It's definitely worth watching. The changes are so different and so positive from the music to the editing to the dialogue to the scenes they put back in and scenes they removed that it's just not the same film. For me, the Rocky Five theatrical release is a 5.5 out of 10 at best, at best. I know people that only watched it one and never watched it again. I like the franchise so much, I did force myself to watch it multiple times over the years, but it, ne it never really felt more than a, a 5.5 slash 6 out of 10 for me, if I'm being generous. If we include Rocky Six and Creed One and Two, then maybe the film goes up to a six just, but it's probably the realest score I can give it is a 5.5 out of 10. Now, the director's cut is a 6.5 out of 10, maybe even on a good day, a 7 out of 10. Now that point jump, point and a half jump, makes all the difference because the film goes from being bad to decent. Yeah, it goes from being bad to decent with that point jump. I don't think we're going to get an official release of this film, and it's a shame, or at least we won't get it with John G. Aviston's vision anyway. We might get a Stallone version, but we probably won't get a John G. Aviston version. It is a shame because the quality of this director's cut is so bad. Granted, after 10 minutes, when you go back to watching VHS quality stuff, you forget about it, just like when you go from widescreen back to 4.3. Eventually, you forget you've even got used to watching HD and widescreen. But yeah, you know, what What I'd love them to do is say, yeah, we're going to take what John did in this cut and we're going to put in, make a HD 4K version. I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to have to live with the fact that we've got this VHS quality um, bootleg screener. But at least it's from the original director. It's not a fan edit. This is not a fan edit. I know there is a fan edit. Um, by a guy that calls himself Last Survivor, which I have also watched. And to be honest, this cut by John G. Avelston is still better than the fan edit, even though the fan edit's HD. He just had access to more footage. Um, go Google Rocky Five Director's Cut Screener and you will find it. Watch it and tell me what you think in the comments. I think... It's a lot better than what got released. And I'd love to know the story behind why they decided to 
Who, whose decision was it to make the theatrical version? Was it Stallone putting pressure on the director? Did Stallone regret giving John G. Everston the director's chair for Rocky V? Did Stallone not want to make those changes? Was it the studio? Was it John himself that put the theatrical release? I have trouble believing it was John himself that put that theatrical release out, especially when he had all this other footage that was clearly better but the feel of the film's different the feel of the film's much better rocky five john g avilston bootleg screener director's cut go watch it we've been zany geek please like share subscribe and we'll catch you next time